Let's take a more in-depth look at space styles. I've created several space objects already and I'll use one of these to review the space style properties. Selecting a space object from the Space tab general panel I'll pick the Edit Style tool which opens the Space Style Properties dialog box. Beginning on the General tab we have the name of the style in the upper left hand corner. On the right hand side we have the Keynote option. This allows us to link this style to the Keynote annotation symbol. We may use either a CSI number or the text description listed below that. We may add notes to the space. We may also have property sets. The next tab, Design Rules, lists space names at the top. The drop-down list uses list definition multipurpose objects. List definitions are created in the Style Manager dialog box. They are a list of items to use in a manual property definition. With space objects, these would be a list of predefined room names, allowing you to select them from a list without having to enter them manually each time. The area length and width variables have target, minimum, and maximum values. You may define a target area, length, and width for spaces inserted with a specific style. This is helpful when you have an upper and lower limits for a type of room that you want to insert. The target area, length, and width are used when you do not use a boundary to generate the space. At the bottom are boundary offsets. You may specify the distance that the space's net, usable, and gross boundaries will be offset from its base boundary. Each boundary has its own display components that you can set according to your needs from the Display Properties tab in this dialog box. The Materials tab allows us to assign layer, hatch pattern, and renderable materials to our display components. These may be used in the display properties of the various space components. On the top right are two buttons for editing or adding materials. Using a material for a component's display property allows us to use the same material across multiple space styles. Any change to that material style, such as a hatch pattern, color, or finish, updates all the space styles using it. The Classifications tab allows inclusion or exclusion in schedules based on the space styles classification. Classifications may also be used for display purposes. You may hide or show objects in a display set based on the classification of the objects. For example, if you classify objects by construction status such as new, existing, or demo, you may exclude objects with the demo classification from the display set on the display options tab. When the display set is used in the current display configuration, the objects using excluded classifications do not appear. The display properties tab allows us control over how the space components look including layer, color, and line type depending on which display representation is current in the view. The edit display properties tool on the upper right opens the display properties dialog box. This allows us to change either the drawing default settings for layer, color, line type, or create a style override. On the other tab you may override the current display configuration cut plane. The last tab, Version History, has information about when the style was created and whether anyone has edited it as well as any comments they may have included. There is also a checkbox for Ignore during Project Standards synchronization. If you are using Project Browser and Project Navigator, you may synchronize all of the standards for your project. This allows you to ensure this space style is applied consistently across all the drawings in the project. If you do not want this particular space style updated, simply check this Ignore During Project Standards synchronization box.